Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, 9-2, characteristics of quadratic functions. Why this is easier than eating a cactus? Ooh, I worry about your generation. All right, let's begin, shall we? Zero of a function is an x value that makes the function equal to zero. In other words, when y equals zero, that would be your x-intercept, so where it crosses the x-axis. You take a look here, and we got this out of your textbook, finding zeros of quadratic functions from graphs. This first one says x squared minus x minus 2. Notice the general shape as it comes down. Notice how it hits the x-axis twice. It hits it once here and hits it once there. Now it says the zeros appear to be at negative 1 and 2. Well, if you plug both of them in, you can see. If you plug negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is 1. And then negative 1, negative negative 1 makes positive 1, so 1 plus 1 and then minus 2. That does in fact equal 0. So when you plug in the negative 1, you do make a 0 in the outcome, so that's okay. Same with the 2. Oops. Sorry. 2 squared minus 2 minus 2, 4 minus 2 minus 2 is also 0, so they both work. Now this one here, y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 2, looks to me like it only appears in the 1 column, so when x equals 1. You put it in, you see, 1 squared is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, 4 times 1 is 4, so negative 2 plus 4 minus 2 does equal 0. Finally, this one does not seem to hit the external step at all. Why that is, is because this particular figure is a parabola, this equation, excuse me, and it's already lifted up one, so it's never going to hit the zero. So no matter what I put the x, I'll never be able to get a negative outcome, because remember, any number times by itself will make either a positive, or in worst case scenario, a zero times zero is zero, but even then, if all this is zero, you're still at plus one. And that's why I'll never hit an x-intercept. Now here we notice it looks like the line crosses the x-intercept where lines negative 1 and 2. We talked about that. x equals 1. And since there's no point that crosses the x-line, there is no number that can x can be to make y equals 0. And we checked it so you already know. Now for the axis of symmetry. Regardless of where the intercepts are, the axis of symmetry will be at the middle of the parabola. In other words, it divides it, cuts it in half if you remember. It's basically like the mirror, the one side to the other. Now, if you have one zero, if it touches like one intercept, if you will, if the function has one zero, use the x-coordinate of the vertex to find the axis of symmetry. And simply put, you have here is saying three comma zero, so your axis of symmetry is at three because it cuts right through. You can easily see it. That's not a problem. Here, x squared minus six x plus nine. If I graph it, looks like my bottom is at a three. Notice how the line touches the x-intercept here at x equals three. Notice how you can plug it in. Now if we do this, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. If I plug in a 3, 3 squared makes 9, minus 6 times 3. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18, plus 9. Notice how it does equal 0. And the middle is called the axis of symmetry, which is at the maximum or minimum of the parabola. So it's either going to be at the bottom, the top, or the bottom. It's where it's going to be at. So you have that there. X symmetry is 3. Now a two intercept parabola is going to be different. If a function has two zeros, use the average of the two zeros to find the x of symmetry. Notice how this one cuts it in two places. Well, okay. What you do is you find both numbers. Here you have x equals negative 4, and here x equals 0. So take the negative 4 plus 0, and yeah, it's negative 4, but divide it by 2, and you're going to find the middle is at negative 2. This should actually say x equals negative 2, but you get the idea here. That is what they're supposed to say. And if you take a look at this example, here I have a touches the x-intercept, or x-axis, at negative 2. This one touches at 6. Take negative, six, negative 2 plus 6, and I think we're going to get positive 4, but then take 4 divided by 2, you get 2. And so 2, when x value equals 2, that's going to be at the middle. What you do is find both x-intercepts. We just find the average of that. We talked about that. So negative 2 plus 6 again. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Take those divided by 2. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the axis of symmetry is 2. And if you didn't know where the bottom is, you just plug the 2 in to find out. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and plug the 2 in if I had the equation, which I don't have at the moment. 
Now remember that the quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c. Well now to find the axis of symmetry from that you can just use this formula. x equals negative b over 2a. In other words, find the number that's here and make it a negative, or if it's a negative it becomes a positive, and take 2 times this first coefficient. So let's say I have this here. So simply put ABC, A is 2, B is 4, C is 5. And we're going to do negative B over 2A. So negative B, which is negative 4, over 2 times A, or 2 times 2. Negative 4 over 2 times 2, and negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. That is the axis of symmetry. Let's do another. Y equals negative 2X squared plus 4X minus 2. Find the x of symmetry, so you have negative 4, and then 2 times negative 2, so you still have negative 4. But now 2 times negative 2 makes negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 equals 1. Now let me graph to prove it. y equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. If I actually put this on the graph here, take a notice. This is what it looks like in the book. It looks like the only 0 appears to be 1, so if I plug that in, plug the 1 in there, looks like it fits because that fits right in the top of it. And that'd be at 1 comma 0. And when I plug the 1 in, notice how it becomes a 0 down here. How again? Well, 1 times 1 is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 4 times 1 is 4, and negative 2 plus 4 minus 2 is in fact 0. Notice how the x value is 1 at the axis of symmetry, and notice how when I plug it in, it becomes a y value of 0. Now for finding the vertex. Let's first take a quick break. Okay, back. Now, y equals negative x squared minus 2x. To find the vertex, what we're going to do is the vertex is negative 1 comma 1. Now that's the very top, but how do we know that? Well, first we find the axis of symmetry. And if you notice that, this seems like the top right here. And that's at x value of negative 1. x equals negative 1, that's the x value where it's going to meet the middle of it. Now the vertex at the top or bottom, we talked about that. So the vertex at negative 1 comma 1. All right. Well, we can do that without graphing at all. Just take negative x squared minus 2x, which is going to make negative 1x squared minus 2x. And again, you have here negative b over 2a, negative negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. Negative negative 2 makes positive 2, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So positive 2 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 1, which again tells us it's going to be a negative 1 anyway. And if you plug the negative 1 in, negative 1 squared is 1, and negative is going to make it negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, so you basically have negative 1 plus 2, which is going to make 1. So x is negative 1, y is 1 negative 1 comma 1 and notice that it's right where it's supposed to be. So you don't have to graph it all if you don't want to. Another short break. Okay, back. y equals 5x squared minus 10x plus 3. Again, without graphing at all, a, b, c. a is 5, b is negative 10, c is 3. Negative, negative 10 over 2 times 5. Negative, negative 10 makes positive 10. 2 times 5 is 10, so really you have 10 over 10, which means x equals 1. Plug the 1 back in here. 1 squared is 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10 plus 3. So you have 5 times 1 is 5 minus 10 plus 3. Makes negative 5 minus 10 plus 3 is going to make negative 2. And so when x is 1, y is negative 2. 1 comma negative 2. And notice how we didn't have to graph it all for that one. Last page, finally the word problem. Architecture application. The height above water level of a curved arch support for a bridge can be modeled by f of x, which remember means y, equals negative 0.007 x squared plus 0.84 x plus 0.8, where x is the distance in feet from the arch support enters the water. Can a sailboat that is 24 feet tall pass under the bridge? In other words, from here, and now I know you can't, may not be able to draw an epic sailboat like me. Yeah, that's the stuff. Oh yeah. Can't, will, the, will it be this tall? 
and were to be too tall, would it crack into the bottom of the bridge? To find that out, we actually have the model right here. So that's what we're going to start with. Let's go ahead and drop it down. We want to find the highest point of the bridge. So if we sail right in the middle, can we clear it then? So we're going to do an ABC. And negative B is negative 0.84. And then over 2 times negative 0 0.007. So that's what we did. And 2 times point negative 0 0.007 is going to be negative 0.014. So top divided by bottom. And you'll find X is 60. So that doesn't mean it's 60 foot tall. The X is 60 means that 60 feet from the bank will be the middle of the bridge and likely it's going to be another 60 feet to the bank of the other side of the bridge so imagine it's going to be a 120 foot bridge and 60 is going to be in the middle that's going to be the middle part where the bridge is going to meet at the highest point take a look so that's 60 foot 60 foot from one side to the middle and that's the idea anyway so it's 60 feet to the middle of the bridge now to find the height I just take that 60 and plug it into the equation so take now you're going to take 60 times 60 times negative 0 0.007 and 60 times 0.84 and then add 0.8 so it's going to take a little bit of calc work and you're going to want to do one thing at a time so solve this solve this and then put all three down so 0 0.007 negative 0 0.007 times 60 square well 60 square is going to make 3600 and it's going to make some other numbers and I just did it all for you I just said the f of x equals 26 so the y value 26 meaning is 26 foot tall is the maximum and if you remember the boat says this is 24 feet tall so at 26 it will basically clear it since the max bridge is 26 of so the bridge and the tip of the tail is 24 it will clear it by 2 feet which means you're going to sail right in the middle and you should be fine good work today we'll do some more in class later thanks again talk to you later bye